my dear child. I am writing to let you know that Rue and I are well. I'm sorry that I was unable to say goodbye to you properly, and I hope you can understand why we had to go on this expedition. We are going to the North Pole to find the last polar bears. <coughs> I remember going to the zoo one hot summer's afternoon and seeing my first polar bear. There was no snow for him to roll in, no icebergs for him to float upon. That was no life for a polar bear. I could not save him. How could I? You can hardly smuggle a polar bear under your coat and walk out with him, can you? Come on, Rue. Here you are, then. Ice cream for Rue. One day in the British Museum, I found a map of Great Bear Ridge, and I knew then that that is where I would find the last polar bears. Your mother said I was too old to go off to the North Pole by myself, but all my life I've either been too young or too old to do what I wanted to do. So, this time, I decided that I would listen to no one. <coughs> Sorry, Rue. I decided to take Rue with me. Huskies would be better, but I couldn't afford to feed them. Rue said that her particular breed were in fact better than Huskies, but that no one had ever given them a chance to prove it. She said she had heard of the North Pole, and that one of her relations helped to put it up. <coughs> Tell Uncle Freddy I only want his golf trolley for a little while. It'll be our sledge. Don't worry, I'll be back. 5th of October. Dear child, I have a very nice cabin. It has two portholes, one for me and one for Rue. Rue has not been a very good sailor. She says that dogs aren't supposed to go on ships. I told her that some ships always have a cat on board to kill rats. Rue said that anything a cat can do, a dog can do better. And the dogs are famous for being great sailors. She said that her grandfather was probably the captain of a ship. He probably was, I said. This afternoon, Rue asked the captain if she could have a go at steering the ship. For half an hour, we went around in circles. Rue said dogs always steer ships this way. The captain was worried about the ship hitting a rock, so he took over, and we continued in a straight line towards the North Pole. I am giving these letters to some fishermen who are on their way back home to Aberdeen. They said they had seen some bad storms, with waves as big as houses, of course, I never mentioned anything about bad weather to Rue because I thought it might upset her. Thursday, the 10th of October. Today, Rue announced that she had changed her mind about finding the last polar bears and that she had decided to go home. She said that she had been mistaken and it isn't snow that her particular breed are good on, it is sand. Rue said that dogs are excellent swimmers and that she could swim home if she wanted to. I was frightened. She just might try it. Tonight, Rue insisted on sleeping in a hammock. I 
wish she would sleep in her basket like a normal dog. Last night, the engine took a real pounding from the storm. When the captain tried to get it going again, nothing happened. Until Rue helped. Rue said that her uncle had lived in a garage. And that's how she knew so much about engines. I said, I have never heard of an engineer dog. Rue said that if there were police dogs, there were bound to be engineer dogs as well. Friday, the 18th of October. We have landed at Walrus Bay. The captain wished me luck and said goodbye. He gave Rue a tin of macaroni cheese. I think he really liked her. The town of Walrus is not a bad place, really. There are a few shops and a mailing station where I can send and receive letters. I picked up the key to our new cabin. It's not much, but it's home. Monday, the 21st of October. Dear child, the weather has been terrible since we arrived. Rue complains about the cold most of the time. I've given her a pair of socks, but she says they're the wrong color and won't wear them. by wolves running across the roof. It was the second time this week and Rue says if they do it again, she will leave. Where she thinks she will go, I have no idea. sure they had been drinking old sock. All this is Grockman's fault. He shouldn't sell them drink. Twenty-third of October. Today the weather cleared, and in preparation for our expedition, I took Rue out to practice dragging the trolley. journey up to Great Bear Ridge, but I don't feel that Rue is ready yet. She will take more training than I thought. 
28th of October. Dear child, we have been stuck inside the cabin for three days and are so short of fuel we have to burn some of our possessions to keep warm. Rue is very upset about her basket. In the end, I had to tell her the story of the ice cream on Bear Ridge to cheer her up. Once upon a time, I told her, the snow was so pure and clean that it tasted better than the finest ice cream money could buy. But as the air got dirtier from all the chemicals and fumes, the snow lost its taste. The last of the world's ice cream lies up on Bear Ridge, and that is why we are going there, to get ice cream for Rue. Rue loves this story, and I must admit I have added bits. A fabulous chocolate mint chip that can only grow in the shade. The delicious strawberry split found only at sunset. These are my own inventions. of October. Dug our way out this afternoon and went down to Walrus to stock up on provisions. Spent a long time searching for the shops. Everything lay buried beneath the snow. Eventually found the mailing station after Rue fell down the chimney. After stocking up on a scarf, a yellow ball, some peanuts, a pair of wellingtons, porridge and some tent pegs, the mailman handed over a long, thin parcel. Your father had sent me my old one-arm. It's my favorite golf club. Not only good for long shots and putting, but it's also an excellent ice pick and walking stick rolled into one. I am sure that with my one arm, I will definitely make it to Bear Ridge and find the polar bears. went to look for driftwood at Blue Whale Bay. Whilst we were gathering wood on the beach, we rescued some frozen seagulls. Thirtieth of October, the seagulls came back to life after thawing out by the stove. They were very confused and made a terrible mess. Rue found the whole incident most distressing and is now in a very bad mood. I decided to get my one on and go golfing. shot. Unfortunately, it hit the wrong target.
When I brought the unconscious penguin back to the cabin, Rue was very annoyed. She said, why didn't I invite the whole of the Arctic into our home and be done with it? We could fill the place with sea lions, Arctic foxes and seabirds, and we could sleep outside. I had to tell her to be a little more caring for her fellow animals. She said, they didn't care for her, so why should she care for them? and three cheers, the penguin has woken up. <laughs> Went outside to get wood for the stove. It struck me that something was wrong. I rushed back in and I noticed the calendar. It said that today was the 32nd of October, which cannot be right, as October has only 31 days. Today should be the 1st of November. Who said that she couldn't care less how many days there are supposed to be in October? Every day is the same to her, and days shouldn't have numbers attached to them anyway. Despite what Rue says, I think we should set off for Bear Ridge as soon as possible before it gets any stranger. 33rd of October. This morning, we set off at once. slopes. They seemed different. More like they must have been before the mailing station came. Wolves! By lunchtime we had reached the gentle slopes and we had started the long climb up. Once I looked back and saw the cabin, a tiny speck in the distance. Rue was pulling the trolley with great enthusiasm, no doubt driven along by the thought of ice cream. And so, by tea time, we were halfway up to the top. We got into our sleeping bags. Penguin didn't, as he is used to sleeping without one. By tomorrow, we shall have reached the top. Very sleepy, your grandfather. Sunday, the 34th of October, a terrible day. blocks of snow to build an igloo.
food left. Just five fish and some porridge, that's all. Only one sleeping bag. Everything else was in the trolley. Very despondent tonight. I can hear the storm outside. 35th of October. The storm has not stopped, stuck in the igloo all day. Played I spy with Rue to keep her spirits up, but there were not many things in the igloo, so the game was very short. Child, you know that I am old, don't you? That is one of the reasons why I went away. I have to see the polar bears before it is too late. The snow caps are melting. Polar bears have nowhere else to go. When I have seen them, we shall come back. Don't worry, child. We know what we are doing. But love, your grandfather. Thirty seventh of October. We now have only one fish left. Thirty eighth of October. Thank heaven for Rue. This evening, she produced her tin of macaroni cheese, which she said she had been saving for a special occasion. It was the best thing I have ever eaten. Storm still going as strong as ever. All three of us in sleeping bag to keep warm. Bless you, child. Your grandfather. of October. Dear child, very weak. We have no food left. I feel more tired than I have ever felt in my life. I shall dream of the polar bears tonight. Rue says she will dream about ice cream. This is a beautiful world, and it goes on forever. <coughs> Shush, Rue. Tomorrow we will search for ice cream for you. Ice cream for Rue.
Monday the 2nd of August, animation director Alan and producer Marion are traveling to Scotland to meet Harry Horse, award-winning author of The Last Polar Bears, one of a series of books about Roo the dog. The Last Polar Bears tells the tale of an eccentric grandfather who embarks on an expedition to the North Pole to see polar bears in the wild. Harry decided to base grandfather's traveling companion on his own dog, Roo. Nice to meet you, Harry. And this must be Rue. Hello. Hello. Great. Good. Come in. Thank you. <laughs> Who's oh, the director, Alan, has come to talk to Harry about turning his book into an animated film. Can you tell us a little bit about Rue? Because she's, she's different than she is in, in the book. Um, yeah, we've, we've had Rue for about 10 years, and we think that she's maybe 11 or 12 years old. Um, but she was found on a motorway outside Edinburgh when she was about a year old, and the police picked her up and took her to a cat and dog home. And uh, when Mandy and I got married, uh, we went along to this dog home, yeah. and, uh, and there she was, and took her home. I thought that she was an amazing looking dog because she's just a little mongrel. She's oh. not any particular type of breed, but she's got very sort of soulful eyes. And I started writing a book about her and I put her very much as the hero. Yeah. And it just didn't really work. And it, it wasn't until Mandy went on, Mandy went up to Shetland to see her mum and dad. And I was left on my own with room. We, we, we lived in a very remote cottage in the borders of Scotland. Right. And we had a, a big snowstorm that night. And because Mandy wasn't there to give her, her her dinner, she ate all this ham on the kitchen table. I think she was panicking that we were in a snowstorm. <laughs> yes. We're cut off. We might as well eat the provisions straight away. <laughs> it really was fortuitous that in just one night, I was able to write this story. And obviously, I didn't finish it in that yeah, night. Yeah. But I got the whole bones of it down. And I was writing sort of feverishly till sort of 4 o'clock in the morning. Of course, Rue in the room with me, yeah. uh, no, no idea as to what I was doing. And so I wanted her to be an anti-hero, I suppose, if you can, if you yeah, can say Yeah, she is. She's not too cute, is she? She's, no, uh, she does exactly as she, she yeah. pleases. I, I started then doing little drawings of her. And I, I, I think that because I felt that they would be very inept travelers, and hence the golf trolley. They would have this yeah. old golf trolley rather than a sledge. He couldn't yeah. afford a proper sledge. He wanted to take a husky, but Rue, but Rue had to do. Well, you told us about Rue. What about Grandfather? Because he's the other star of the book, really. Well, he's, he's very much based on my grandfather. He spoke 11 languages. He was a linguist and a historian, and he, he when I was when I was very small, he certainly encouraged me to speak French, and he taught me to love books, and is therefore probably the biggest influence in my life. And that's mm. because of him, I, I've chosen, uh, you know, this as a career. So in character, is he similar to the character in the book? Was he an adventurer? Or yes, he, he was. He was an adventurer. He travelled extensively around the world, and he also wrote uh, a, a lot of letters back to his mother. Oh, right. And uh, daily he would write postcards and letters back. Fantastic. But his his uh, character mm. is uh, he was a very gentle man. Um, what about the other characters? Because you've got Grogmans and Jackson. Jackson is a friend of mine, Alan Jackson, a poet. Wow. And uh, well, it would be good because yeah, because we'll have to have Jackson in the film as well. So we'll have to do. It's a caricature, or if there's anything you can send us as reference for I've done for lots Jackson. of drawings of Jackson, oh, so... Yeah. Um, <laughs> one of the things is the penguins. Yeah. You're keen that we should keep the penguins in. I am, although there aren't any penguins in the North Pole, as has been pointed out to me. <laughs> uh, a seven-year-old boy wrote to me in a very scientific manner, pointing out that there were no penguins in the North Pole. Yeah. And I think that Grandfather was mistaken. It's, it, it, it was a mistake. But then I don't think there are wolves in the North Pole either. It's well, obviously it's going to be slightly different from the book, but <laughs> we'll keep the wolves in. We'll keep right. as much as we can in. It starts here, and it goes through over to here. 
How many weeks is that? 16 weeks. Wednesday, the 4th of August. Back in London, the production team begin to plan and schedule the animation. In campaign. Yes. Um, we start Everything must be planned to the minutest detail because over the next 10 months, more than 85 different people will be involved in bringing Rue's story to life. Meanwhile, back in Scotland, Rue and Harry and Mandy will have to wait almost a year before they see the finished film. So we've worked out the beginning, more or less. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done the journey. Editing Thursday, the 24th of August. One of the first people to start working on the film is Trevor, the storyboard artist. Oh, penguins, yes. Yeah. Uh, as as a kind of welcoming committee. Well, there actually aren't penguins in, in the Arctic, but it's no. funny. Well, it's obviously a new breed of penguin. Well, it's funny uh, if we could use, use them as much as possible. It is Trevor's job to tell the story in a series of pictures, like a comic. Monday, the 27th of September. The storyboard is then timed and edited down to an exact running time of 25 minutes. Um, can we look at the Jackson sequence again? Right. It's not going to be easy to cut down, is it? I mean, it's a short sequence as it is. It's just about possible, but I think we're really talking about taking it out. Yeah. We could. I mean, it's not really carrying the story forward, is it? Well, we'll just have to tell Harry then that Jackson's out. You so. can tell him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> OK. No, I've no problems with that. OK, nice to hear you. I'll speak soon. All right, bye-bye. Um, we keep the line quality. Wednesday, the 29th of September. Now the layout artist, Neil, can start. This is great, yeah. Using the storyboard, he will design each scene in detail, plotting the camera moves and drawing up the backgrounds so that they work with the character animation. The other thing is the ship. It's got to be exactly as Harry draws it, but it's whether there's some shots that we've planned on the storyboard where it, would, it is three-dimensional. When we had to turn the boat, we had yes. to build it in 3D. Right. And we, yeah. we used that information to help the animator. It yeah. could go through a, a process where you can get the line quality. Yeah. To look drawn, yes. Uh, render it out and yeah. turn it into uh, animo, paint it up. Yeah. So we do all the other elements would be drawn, like mm -hmm. the sea. Yeah. And uh, any effects. Yeah, all the smoke, yeah. uh, waves, this little rope. Get all the fine details in there. While the 3D ship and the layouts are continuing, work starts on the backgrounds. Alan and Monica discuss colours. We could, yes, we could use the these kind of colors green and you've got the green fantastic. you've got a green sky it's yeah quite the other thing i do like i like the line we definitely have to keep the line as that's what okay. is in the original drawings do you like different color lines like for example the snow has a blue line and the, the house oh, of the yeah. building has like a brown like woody, a brown woody yeah line. yeah yeah i think that'd be better than just okay. a stark black because i would you know if you have to do it by hand much as well advan take advantage of yeah the, the, the fact ten lines we can do different yeah, colors. colors yeah brilliant OK, well, we'll carry on doing this, and we'll, then we'll plan sketches for the different sequences. Before the animators can start work, the voices must be recorded. An actor is cast for grandfather. But who will be Rue? So you think you could make Rue bark? I can. You can? You I sure? can. Rue bark. Bark. <laughs> bark. Oh, what yes. About it? <laughs> 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 and what about grandfather? What sort of voice do you think? We should have. His uh, character yeah. is, uh, he was a very gentle man, and, uh, but he was a very old-fashioned Englishman, so mm -hmm. he had that um, way of doing things the correct way, and you'll notice in the book that a lot of the time he's quite annoyed with Rue because she doesn't actually, uh, she's not behaving herself. The, the pairing up of Rue and my grandfather as an old man. Right under sort of dire conditions, under snowstorms, that they would be a good pair together. Award-winning actor Sir Nigel Hawthorne was chosen for the voice of grandfather, and Rue came to London to join him at the recording studio. Grandfather and Rue. Mm. Tuesday the 5th of October, mm. Alan and Marion meet the composer Rick for the first time to discuss the music for the film. 
really, yes. aren't they? They're, yes. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. musically, yeah. they are similar. And then we go into the backstory of why they're going. And, and the emotion should carry on through the zoo, that it's fairly mm. sad and low-key, because that's a kind of pivotal thing. That's why mm. they go on the journey. And then after that, it kind of goes a bit quirky. But that, yeah. I quite like to keep that mm. a little yeah. bit odd. And the yeah. wolves are on, it's, you know, yes. it's kind of... Comedy in, in yeah. the real sense, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. it. Monday, the 11th of October. Now animation can start. The animators bring the characters to life. Here we see Odile working on a scene of Rue. And this scene is just, it's about four or five seconds long. Mm. And it's when the penguins first come over the hill. That's it. One penguin comes over, doo -doo 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 -doo, and then it overlaps with the second penguin. So yeah. the ants do have a crowd of penguins. Yeah. But they're very fast and very jokey. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right, okay, side to side. Bit. Laurent has yeah. been chosen to animate the penguins. Thursday the 28th of October. As well as character animation, special effects such as smoke and water also have to be animated. These are the uh, printouts of uh, the 3D ship for scene 102. The scene where it comes towards us. So we'll need um, Wake, obviously, to make it sit on the background. Yes. I think it would look nice to have a little bit of smoke drifting down into the oh, distance. Right. Yeah. Effects animator Tony begins work. Coming down behind. Yes. All right, yeah, that'd be good. Monday, the 1st of November. When all of the animation is finished, it is scanned onto computers, and for the first time, it is possible to see the characters moving. At this point, the director can make any changes he wishes before the completed scene goes to Claire for painting. Tuesday, the 25th of January. Monica's backgrounds are also scanned into the computer and the painted animation is combined with the correct background. Friday, the 3rd of March. Further special effects can also be added using the computers. A reflection is added to complete this scene. The final picture is beginning to take shape. Monday, the 27th of March. The editor and director check that Nigel Hawthorne's narration works exactly with the pictures. So, can we go forward to, I was frightened, just might try it? Yeah. Rue said the dogs are excellent swimmers and that she could swim home if she wanted to. I was frightened she just might try it. Shall we try moving it to near the end of the sequence? The shot where Rue's tied to the chair. There we are. I was frightened she just might try it. Yeah, that works. That works well. Yeah. Friday the 7th of April. The composer Rick has been working on the film for several weeks and now begins fine-tuning the music to work with the edited narration and finished animation. Wednesday, the 10th of May. Whoa, Malcolm. The, the rope is really nice, but there's, uh, we need a big thump mm, as the gangplank gang goes down, if you've a got one. A clunk. Yeah. The final stage of the production takes place at the dubbing studio, where the voice, music and animation are combined with sound effects by dubbing mixer Malcolm. We have landed at Walrus Bay. There, when they come down off the gangplank, we have Rue barking. Mm. A couple of barks from Rue. Yeah, OK. As long as it doesn't clash with Grandfather talking. OK. Yeah. Yeah. We have landed at Walrus Bay. Friday the 19th of May. At last, the film is posted to Harry and Rue. Oh, what's this? It's a film. Goodness me, look at that. Come on, let's go and have a look at it. The tape's arrived. Come on, come on. Come on. Have a look. Yeah. 